I'm muting everyone as we begin um, right now. Uh, thank you guys for joining us. I'm sure others will be joining in shortly. I will keep admitting people in as they come. Um, very thankful for all of us, for our health and, and happiness and family time. Uh, again, encouraging all of you as parents to continue to motivate and push your kids to, to excel past the norm. Uh, this is the best time to, to reach into the world of opportunity. And we wanna make sure that everybody's taking advantage of these webinars, taking advantage of information that's, that's coming our way constantly um, on the coronavirus, as we heard from Narita uh, this past uh, couple days ago, and just asking questions. Definitely want more student athletes asking more questions, um, especially today as we start talking about time management and uh, into this weekend, when I hone in on creating the, 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 what we consider the perfect student athlete um, in the world of sports. So today I'd like to introduce Ryan Stewart. Um, he will give his background, but we're very honored to have him, former NFL player, former radio talk show host, uh, entrepreneur, and I would like to hand the floor over to Mr. Stewart. Mr. Zimmerman, uh, Mr. Zimmerman I really appreciate it, and uh, I'd like to, first of all, tell everyone that's uh, on this webinar, thank you for your time um, in this uh, forced situation that we're all dealing with. Um, a lot of people are choosing to just kind of disconnect from social media and from uh, computers and from TV and just kind of doing the family thing. So I appreciate everyone that has uh, come inside to uh, spend time with me today. Um, before we get started, I wanted to say a quick prayer if that was okay with everyone. So if you would bow your heads for a quick second, I'll say a quick prayer. Uh, Heavenly Father, we come to you, Lord, to say thank you. Um, thank you for what's going on with the global leaders, Father. Thank you for what's going on with James Forrest and his AAU basketball team. Thank you for uh, every athlete that is involved with this call and with this program. And thank you for the parents that are in attendance as well. Uh, I pray, Father, that you sit me down and you stand up inside of me, Father, to impart wisdom and a word filled with blessings to these young student athletes, Father. I pray that they understand that they're called student athletes for a reason, and that order is ever so important for them to understand, and they should move, fo move forward uh, understanding that they are students first, Father. Uh, I pray that they'll know you. I pray that they will trust their mentors, and I pray that they will learn to network, Father. And I pray that they understand the importance of 24, 168, and 7, which is something that I intend to explain. I love you. Thank you. Trust me. Believe in your Lord. And in your son, Jesus Christ, I pray, Father. Amen. So again, um, good afternoon, everybody. Um, uh, I'm looking forward to spending some time with you, a little bit about myself before we get started into a few things that I wanted to talk to the young people about. Uh, first things first, I'm a father of three right now. Uh, I've got two boys, um, the oldest is 10, my youngest son is eight, and uh, I've got a four-year-old daughter. So um, everything that goes on in this house is affected by them and their actions. So as much as I've begged them to stay quiet and to go outside and to not disrupt dad for the next 15 to 20 minutes, um, it's not guaranteed that they will do so. so Please be patient and bear with me if it gets a little crowd or I have to turn around and correct someone with uh, what they're doing and what they're saying. Um, I'm here to talk with everyone on the call about time management as a student athlete. Um, I'm from a small town called Monk's Corner, South Carolina. That is about four and a half, close to five hours away from Atlanta, Georgia. And when I was in Monk's Corner, South Carolina, I attended a high school called Berkeley High School. At Berkeley High School, I played football, basketball, and I also ran track. I lettered uh, all four years in all four sports. Uh, I was the captain of the varsity football team uh, my sophomore year, my junior year, and my senior year. And I say all of that because for the student athletes that are on this call, you know, we've got a lot in common. You know, I once was you 30 years ago. Uh, Coach Forrest and I, uh, we attended Georgia Tech and we all got there at the same year back in 1991 and we were freshmen there together. Uh, I think it's absolutely incredible that all of you guys are affiliated with Team Forrest. Um, 
I know James, I trust James, I believe in James. And if there's one thing that is consistent about James and something that he stands for, he stands for the betterment of his people. And right now, you being student athletes under his tutelage is a blessing because A, he's been where you are right now. B, he super succeeded expectations of several people to ultimately get done what he did get done while at Georgia Tech. And he's an incredible businessman that is sacrificing his time to spend time with all of you student athletes to make you better. Uh, I can't thank Rodney Zimmerman enough for all that he's doing when it comes to the innovation of not allowing COVID-19 to set you back, not allowing COVID-19 to hold you down or stop your learning process. Uh, what Rodney is doing with uh, uh, his, his empowerment of young minds and his global leader platform is absolutely amazing. And you will be able to learn if you just are willing to take the time to pay attention to what's going on, okay? And I talked about being like you guys were 30 years ago because I was a student athlete that was trying to figure out my way. I was a student athlete that wanted to make the most out of my opportunity. And I was a student athlete, quite frankly, that wasn't sure what I wanted to do outside of sports, okay? So one of the things that I'll talk to you guys about today is how life should be treated as a game, okay? Um, we're athletes, we understand sports. There's a protocol to sports. You know, your head coach will come first. Assistant coaches will come below that. A team captain will come below the assistant coaches. And then typically in sports, uh, there's a protocol to uh, the age of the participants. Seniors run the roost. Juniors run the roost behind the seniors. Uh, if you're a sophomore that's got some skills and can play, you will have a voice. Uh, but as a freshman or a first year player on whatever team you're a part of, a lot of people won't listen to you and value your opinion. You get your opinion valued one or two ways. One is by being a great athlete, all right? If you're a great athlete that understands the sport that you play, you can garner respect from your peers. You can garner respect from coaches. You can garner respect from uh, the people that you want to impress. And the second thing is by being a diligent student that happens to be an athlete. Uh, something that I've learned uh, from a very young age is that a, smart people that know when to speak and when they choose to speak, know what they're talking about, will be given respect, all right? So uh, being like you guys were years ago, I learned from a few different reasons or a few different people that athletes have an opportunity and you get out of your sport what you put into your sport, all right? I'm, I'm gonna repeat that one more time. Athletes get out of their respective sports what they put into their sports. And along those same lines, student athletes, because I will continue to talk about the student athlete because you're students first and foremost, student athletes get out of every class what they put in to that class, all right? So here I am, a guy that 30 years ago was sitting in the same seats that you guys are sitting in, uh, aspiring to do the same things that you guys are aspiring to do, wanting to be the best student athlete that I could be, uh, wanting to get my best grades, wanting to be the best performer that I could be, and wanting to progress in this sport as far as I could, all right? So again, I'll impress upon you, I was just like you, okay? When I was in the eighth grade, my brother came to me. He was a junior in high school. He was an incredible athlete that played the running back position. And he happened to be behind a three-year starter that was six foot three, 240 pounds, and he ran a 4340. Okay? So my brother could not crack the starting lineup because of the people that were in front of him. 
Well, my brother came home one day frustrated and said, I want you to listen to what I'm about to tell you. If you do what I tell you to do, you will give yourself the best opportunity to get a scholarship, to go to college on a free scholarship, to play sports on that scholarship, and to give yourself a chance to be better after sports. I told my brother who I had never listened to prior to that conversation, I'm all ears. Tell me what I need to do to receive a scholarship. Tell me what I need to do to go to the school of my choice. And tell me what I need to do to better myself after I get done with school. He said, you need to start training right now. You need to start running every single day. You need to start lifting weights. You need to start stretching. And you need to do everything that you can to get the best grades that you possibly can. As an eighth grader at the time, like many of you guys are, it was the first time that I said, I'm gonna do everything my brother just told me to do, all right? He was older than me, he was an athlete, he was a pretty good student, and he was a guy that found himself wishing he had done things differently. So one of the first things we're gonna to talk to you about is mentorship and the importance of the mentorship. Mentorship and the importance of the mentee listening to the mentors. Rodney Zimmerman, who set all this up using all this technology, is a great mentor that you have access to. James Forrest, a former NBA player, a former college standout, and a guy that coaches your team right now, is the perfect person for you to accept mentorship from. The parents that have taken time out of their day right now to be on this call with you are the perfect people for you to listen to when it comes to being mentored. Mentors can save your life if you will just simply listen to what they tell you. Listening to what they tell you. My father told me at a young age, he made a lot of mistakes growing up and his prayer for me was to not make the same mistakes. And he promised me that if I listened to everything he told me to do and try to enforce what he would tell me to do, that I would be a better person, better adult, better businessman, and better athlete than he was. So coming from my dad who had things pretty figured out and coming from my brother who kept telling me, if you just do X, Y, and Z, you'll be in a better position than I am. I beg for all of you that's listening on this call to take advantage of every speaker that Rodney and James puts before you. Everyone that they have asked to come and spend time with you, they have families, they have jobs, they have this COVID-19 coronavirus situation to deal with, uh, they got to provide shelter and safety for their loved ones. If Rodney or Mr. Zimmerman and Coach Forrest takes someone's time to come and spend time with you, listen to what they're saying. Because it's an opportunity for you to learn from something that they've done right or for you to learn from something that they've done wrong. So. Speakers such as myself, the two speakers that you've had prior to me, and the, the other litany of speakers that you will have in the coming weeks, make sure you take advantage of having access to them. If they've been brought into your life, it is to help you be a better student athlete, okay? That's the first thing. The second thing I want to talk to you about is having a relationship with God. I prayed prior to this call with you about what, what I'm going to talk about. I prayed prior to getting on this call as I put together some notes to spend time with you. I prayed all through middle school. I prayed through high school. I prayed through college. I prayed through my five years with the NFL, with the Detroit Lions. Uh, as I guess I forgot to mention, I, I did get a scholarship to Georgia Tech, and I did play five years of pro ball prior to starting a company with my cousin called the Two Live Stews, where we did media in sports entertainment and broadcasting for about 15 years. So 
when you get an opportunity from Coach Forrest or from Mr. Zimmerman to listen to someone tell you about their journey, make sure that you are taking everything that they say to heart. Make sure that you're listening and paying attention and make sure that you take some notes. So in days to come, after speaking with your speakers, you will have the opportunity to go over those notes to better yourself. When I was in the eighth grade, my brother came to me and said, you need to start running, lifting, having the best grades that you can have, and you need to make sure that you are preparing yourself for your future. I started running that day. I ran three miles every day, six days a week, every week from the eighth grade until I graduated from high school after my senior year. And I only ran because my brother said it was going to help me. I only ran because my brother was always telling me that if you are willing to do things that other people aren't willing to do, you will put yourself in a better position than the people that aren't doing what you are doing. And it, that sounds real complex, but it's actually simple. During this time away from school while you're homeschooling, during this time where we're forced to stay in our homes and not spend time around big groups of other people, there's two types of athletes, all right? There's the type of athlete that's going to look at this as a vacation where they get to chill. There's the type of athlete that are gonna look at this like, here's my opportunity to get some rest. Here's my opportunity to play some more video games. Here's my opportunity to put in some more quality time with my family and my girlfriend or my boyfriend. There's that type of athlete. Let's call that athlete, athlete A. And then there's athlete B. The athlete that is going to make extra time now that they've got all of this extra time to better themselves with whatever their craft is, to better themselves with whatever drills they can do to make them a better athlete to better themselves by reading books that have been recommended by coaches and or teachers and administrators. There are some people that are going to do extra drills outside of everything that their coach has asked them to do. There's athlete A who's going to sleep in late. And there's athlete B who's going to wake up ready to better themselves in school, and in their respective sports, rather it be football, baseball, basketball, track and field, or whatever it is that you do. I'm asking each of you to choose to better yourselves with this time off that you have right now. I'm asking each of you to better yourselves by, if you don't have a relationship with God, by creating a relationship with God right now. The reason being is because I don't care who your best friend is and how often you talk to your best friend. I don't care who your coach is and how much your coach loves you and wants you to be the best that you can be. I don't care who your teachers are and the things that they try to instill in you. And as much as I know your parents love you and adore you and want the best for you, there's going to come a time in your life where your best friends, your coaches, your teachers, and your parents will not be able to assist you with something that's very important to you. And when those people can't assist you with something that's important to you, God will be able to help you with whatever it is that you're trying to do or needing to get done with the blink of an eye. If he wants it for you, if it's in his will for you, he will make it happen for you as long as you are willing to assist him by being your best you all the time. There's several things that you need to understand, as one of them already was. If you want to be the best that you can be, you have to be willing to put in all the time that you can. Also, something you need to understand is that Whatever you set your mind to doing, you will have the opportunity and the ability to do it if you work towards it. 
So a couple of things that we'll recap over really briefly. One is I've been in the position that you're in right now as a student athlete wanting to be the best. Two is I think it's important for you to know God and understand his will over your life. And three is the importance of mentorship and how it matters. Because of what my brother told me in the eighth grade, I was the first to get to practice. I was the last to leave. I got to practice early to do extra work. I stayed late to do extra work. I took home extra film because my brother said that I needed to do more to be the best that I could be. My brother said I needed to do more than the other people that I was competing with or even on the same team with to be the best that I could be. So I ran more, I studied my athletics more and filmed more. I went to work early and stayed late. And looking back at it, those were all very important things for me to be the best athlete that I could be. So now we'll go back to the, the downtime that you have and what you're doing with your time, okay? Three numbers that are very important in everyone's life. It's the number 24, which happened to be my number in high school and college. It's the number 168, and it's also the number seven. And here's where the time management piece will come into the things that I'm talking to you about. Everyone has 24 hours in a day. There's nothing that any individual can do to make more time than 24 hours in a day. Everyone has the same 170, I'm sorry, 168 hours in the course of their week. There's nothing anyone can do to have more than 168 hours throughout the course of a week, okay? And lastly, the third number. Everyone only has seven days a week to do different things with. The importance of 24, 168, and seven. My question to you is how many of your 24 hours have you dedicated to being the best student athlete that you can be. You only get 24 hours. Out of those 24 hours, it's suggested that you sleep eight hours. Okay? So 24 minus eight leaves you with what? What's that, 16? Okay? So you've got, if, if you're getting the suggested eight hours of sleep per day, that leaves you 16 hours. When you go to school, you go to school for seven to eight hours. And while you're at school for those seven to eight hours, I think it's paramount, very important, that you dedicate all of your time to those eight hours while you're at school. While you're in those classrooms for those eight hours, what's on the walls of those classrooms? If you've got a teacher that has a lot of things on the wall all around the room, I think you should do your best to understand what everything on your teacher's wall is for. What is it about? Why was it important for that educator that is teaching you math, reading, English, history, social studies, music, art, PE, all these people that you spend time with throughout the course of your eight hour day, when you're with them for that 45 minutes to an hour, why are certain things on the wall? You should understand the importance of why they put that on the wall. Everything that they put on the board, you should understand why it's on the board. If your teacher or administrator took time to write something on the board, you should have it someplace in your notes. You should copy it down every single day. Whatever's on the board, you should have it in your notes. 
whatever's been put on a Promethean board, you should understand what it is and, and why it's important to you. Whatever's on the projector screen, you should understand why it's important to you and why you should know that. Your educators are paid to teach you different things about life when it comes to you and what they're instructing you in. If you're forced to spend one hour with them five days a week out of your 168 hours, so we're talking five hours with this one individual, you need to dedicate all of those five hours to whatever it is they are trying to teach you. So we've got eight hours of sleep, we've got eight hours of school, and now that only leaves you with an additional eight hours throughout the course of your day. What are you doing with your 24? What are you doing with your 168 hours? What are you doing with your seven days a week to make you the best student that you can be and to make you the best athlete that you can be? What are you doing with it? We all get to choose what we do with our time. There was times when I was in college where I played video games in my room with other teammates or other friends for two to three hours a day. I was the best at the game. <laughs> Madden, we played hockey back in the day. We played FIFA. We played RBI baseball. We played Sega Genesis. We played Nintendo. Um, the Xbox came around later, but I was the best at beating my friends at those games. Looking back at my life, the reason why I was the best was because I was putting in two to three hours a day while being an athlete, while being a student, while being in a fraternity, which is all about um, uplifting our people and doing community service and helping the homeless and feeding the hungry and mentoring kids that need help. Amongst all those things that I was doing, I was still finding time to put in two to three hours a day playing video games. I graduated from Georgia Tech, I'm sorry, I graduated from high school with a 3.0. I graduated from Georgia Tech with a 2.6. Looking back at it, as the 47 year old that I am now, a 2.6 is a terrible grade point average to have. And my grade point average was so low because I was dedicating two to three hours per day playing video games in my spare time. What would happen had I taken those three hours a day, which is 15 hours a week, and dedicated those 15 hours a week to my studies. Would I have had more than a, a 2.6 when I graduated? No question about it. What if I had taken, instead of 15 hours of video games every week, what if I had taken an extra 12 hours to work out in the gym, to run, to study film, to spend time with my coach? If I had taken part of that 15 hours a week to dedicate to my athletics, do you think I could have been better than a third round draft pick in the National Football League to the Detroit Lions? Could I have been a second round draft pick to Kansas City? Could I have been a first round draft pick to the Atlanta Falcons? There's no question to me that if I would have dedicated more time into my craft and my studies, that I could have had better grades, and I could have been a better athlete. So I'm imploring all of you student athletes to think about your time. We make time to do whatever it is that we think is important. As student athletes, towards my senior year, I read an article in some uh, business magazine or was it National Enquirer or, or some 
some magazine that was talking about athletics and athleticism and scholarships in school. In that article, I read that for every hour of class that I had, I should have dedicated two hours of studies to the individual class. So that's a two to one ratio of study time to class time. So there were several quarters at Georgia Tech where I had 15 hours of class. If I've got 15 hours of class, it's being recommended for me to be on top of those studies like I should be to prepare myself mentally to get through those classes like I needed to and to get the best classes. But every hour that I had, I needed to study two hours. So if I'm carrying a workload of 15 hours, sometime throughout the course of my 168 hours in a week, I needed to dedicate myself to 30 hours of study. A two to one ratio. I had friends and roommates that graduated with 3.5s and 4.0s because when I was playing video games with a select few friends, every day for two to three hours, they would be out in the hallway studying because we were too loud in the room for them to study. My roommate Rodney Wilkerson, former NFL athlete, former standout, a uh, football player at Georgia Tech studied three to four hours every single day, Monday through Sunday. He was disciplined enough as a 17, 18, 19, and 20 year old to know that he wanted to be a 4 0 student. And the only way he would be a 4 0 student would be that if he took the time to study with a two to one ratio of his classwork. So listen guys, it's worked out pretty good for me because I'm a 46 year old adult that retired at the age of 41, not having to work for anyone else ever again because I invested my money well and I did fairly good in the businesses that I've been a part of and I did good with my craft in radio and television, and I was an okay athlete. But looking back at it, I, I possibly may have been able to graduate at 35 <laughs> had I studied with a two to one ratio for every hour that I had in class. Had I taken less time chasing girls around and having a social life, being a socialite in college, had I taken you know, time from that two hours to put time into studying, to put time into the weight room, to put time into running and stretching and doing the best that I can to be the best athlete that I could be. What are you doing with your 24, your 168, and your seven? What are you doing every day to make yourself better in your respective classroom? classes and in your sports. Now is a great time for you to take all the extra time that you have while you're at home, homeschooling, to be the best athlete and the best student that you can be. Last point, guys. Your network will equal your net worth. I'm very proud to tell you guys that in every job that I've ever had, every interview that I've ever been in, I have never handed out one resume. I've got a resume that's incredible. It's, it's a very good looking resume. Um, my wife who is a, a principal and I've been with her for the last 13 years and I knew her 10 years before we got married, she's just, a professional student. She understands things uh, when it comes to learning and, and teaching and, and being a leader. So she does incredible resumes. So she did my resume 
back in 1995. But I never had to use it because every job that I got that paid me anything outside of what I did in sports, I didn't hand in a resume. I got those jobs because of my network. Your network is the people that you have access to, whether that be directly or indirectly. You directly have access to Coach Forrest. You directly have access to Mr. Rodney Zimmerman. Indirectly, you have access to every parent, every administrator that has anything to do with you or your teammates. You have access to these individuals. Your network will equal your net worth. If you are hanging out with the guys on the team that don't study a lot, the guys on the team that don't respect their parents, teachers and coaches, or the guys on the team that's drinking and smoking, you are going to ultimately end up being just like those guys. With your 24 hours a day, with your 168 hours a week, and with your seven days a week, who are you hanging out with? Who are you studying with? Who are you playing games with? Who are you training with? Who are you talking to? The individuals that you surround yourself with are exactly who you are in the mirror. So what I'm saying to you guys is if you're hanging out with the kids that's drinking and smoking, the kids that's not studying, the kids that's sleeping in late, the kids that don't do their homework, the kids that don't respect their parents, when you get done with high school and prayerfully going to college and get done with college, you're going to be one of the guys that's making thirty-five dollars to $40,000 a year. Not that anything is wrong with that number. But you're not going to be the guy that maximizes your opportunity. If you find yourself hanging out with guys with like-minded ideals like you have, wanting to be the best student that they can be, studying with that two-to-one ratio every day, going to practice early, going to the weight room early, showing up for running sessions early, asking Coach Forrest about extra drills that you can do, staying after practice shooting extra free throws, staying after practice working on that shot that you missed four or five times today. If you're the kid that's hanging out with the kids that are doing that, you're on your way to winning. You're on your way to countless opportunities. You're on your way to winning, and you're on your way to increasing your network to have the opportunity to meet more people and have more people willing to help you. Every young person that's in the position you're in right now needs to think about their goodwill and being the best that they can be. Because if you, if you have goodwill, and if you are someone that's trustworthy when it comes to older people in your life, the administrators and the teachers, in 10 years or 15 years after you're done with school, you're going to need your network to help you with something. And if you've done things right at age 14, 15, 16, and 17, when you're at age 25, 26, 27, and 28, trying to make connections, you have limitless resources to get what you need. Let me tell you the importance of that. I never handed out resumes. I never handed out bios. I would get phone calls from companies or individuals saying, hey, I'm calling for Ryan Stewart. Is this Ryan? Yes, it's Ryan. Well, I spoke with a friend of yours named Dorsey Levins. He overheard me telling him that I'm looking for a guy to host a car show. Well. Uh, Dorsey ensured me that you know a lot about cars, that you've got a pretty good personality, and you like to work. So I'm calling to ask you if you want to sit down and talk about hosting this car show that I have for you. When that happened, it was a company called the R&M Car Auction that called me because a friend of mine 
overheard a conversation and recommended that these people call me. When they called, I accepted the call, accepted the interview, flew to Malibu, California on their dime, got put up in a hotel for a week, and we did an interview for one day, I accepted the position, and I did seven shows for the r and car auction in Malibu, California, and they paid me $35,000 for doing that week's worth of work. These are the types of jobs that I've been blessed to have since I've been an adult. I worked for ESPN. I did a show called First Take for seven years. I worked for TV One. I did a show called Black Men Reveal for three seasons. I've done shows for VH1. I've done shows for BET. I get booked all the time to host events. I get booked all the time to help people with marketing. And every time I get booked, it's not because I've mailed out any of my resumes. It's because a friend of a friend recommended me for an opportunity. And now I'm standing before you because Coach Forrest reached out to me to come and talk to you about time management as an athlete and getting the most out of your time to be your best you every day. So I'm on this call with you now, talking to you about some of my life experiences and how I got where I am today. And I got where I am today by being the best that I could be, surrounding myself with an incredible network and treating life like it's a game. The time that we put into the Xbox, the time that we put into the pretty girl, the time that we put into the pretty boy, the time that we put into the quarterback position, the time that we put into the running back position, the time that we put into the, the office of guard position, the forward position, the center position, the time that we put into being a coach, the time that we put into being an administrator like Mr. Zimmerman, the time that we put into doing these things is what we're going to get back in return. It's just that simple. So with the 24 hours that we get per day, with the 168 hours that we get per week, with the seven days that we get per week. If you're investing into yourself by being the best student athlete you can be, by studying your work with a two to one ratio, by putting in extra time with, with what coach is asking you to do, by putting in extra time with what your teachers are asking you to do, by writing down everything that the teacher has on the board, by taking impeccable notes every day, by understanding why something is in the classroom wall, by doing those simple things every single day, every day of your life, from the age that you are right now until you get done with college athletics and possibly a professional career, by investing your time and energy into those things, that determines who you ultimately will become. We can be whatever we want to be in life if we're willing to invest in being our best every single day. And if life is a game and you play really good in Xbox 2K or you spend a lot of time and you can, you can sit down and talk with any girl or guy and have them see things your way, if you can come home and put in two hours of study time for every hour of class that you have, in 10 years, you will have whatever it is you want out of life. Don't find yourself like the guys and the girls that aren't investing into their future every day. One of my favorite mentors in college used to call me Stuart. And he says, Stuart, let me tell you something. You know why it's very important for you to be the best that you could be every single day, Stuart? I said, nah, Coach Smith, tell me why. He said, because you're not investing in yourself every day. You are investing in your kid's future. I want you all to think about that. Your parents, your coaches, and your teachers 
sacrifice for their children every day so they can have the best that they could possibly have to help them be the best that they could possibly be in the future. They're invested in their kids. What I'm asking you to do with your 24, your 168, and your seven is I'm asking you to invest in yourself every day so your kids in 10, 15, or 20 years from now will have the best opportunity that they have with their life. I think if we think on a grander scale with everything that we're doing, I think if we think on a grander scale behind the purpose of why God has us in the room he's got us in, I think if we think on a grander scale, we'll ultimately do better preparing for our kids' future. Because if we knock it out the box like we're supposed to with everything that we should be knocking it out the box with, our kids will have the life that every parent wants their kid to have. They'll have resources. They'll have clothing. They'll have a home. They'll have food to eat. They'll have means of transportation. They'll have um, insurance. They'll have a good network of other families around them to ultimately help them be their best selves every single day. That's what I want you guys to get out of these webinars. That's what I wanted you to get out of me spending 15 to 20 minutes with you today. That's what I want you to get out of Coach Forrest every time you can spend time with him. That's what I want you to get out of Coach Zimmerman, who is the director of what's going on with all of this stuff. That's what I want you to get out of every teacher that's in a position to help you, every administrator that's in a position to help you. Use your network to ultimately decide what your net worth will be in the future. Nothing's wrong with making $35,000 a year. It's a good earning. If you're hanging out with cats that's making $35,000 a year, that's what you're gonna make. But if you surround yourself with a handful of people that are making $100,000 a year, guess what? You're at that table with the decision makers that are making $100,000 a year. <laughs> you're in the same grouping. You're in the same pairing with all those people because we are who we hang out with. If we're hanging out with the kids that are studying with a two to one ratio over their classes, you're going to be the kid that ultimately has the all A's, gets the scholarship offers, gets the opportunities to better themselves. So let's recap a few things before we say a prayer and leave things where we are. A, it's important you have a relationship with God because he ultimately makes the decision over your life. You get to help God make the decision by being your best you and by being prepared for opportunities that will come your way. But the more you understand and know God's will over your life, and the better you help God help you, the better position you will be. You'll be in. Two, networking is very important. Your network will equal your net worth. If you're surrounded by a bunch of cats that don't do much, don't help people much, aren't teaching much, and aren't learning much, then you're doing all those things with them. But if you're hanging out with people that have aspirations to be great, want to be the best player on the team, want to be the best student in the classroom, always listening to whoever the teacher is, whoever the coach is, surrounding themselves by a bunch of good peers, if you're hanging out with those kids, look in the mirror because that is who you are. In 10 to 15 years, your kids will be able to thank you for being a good provider. Everything is a game. Last point. And if we put the time into our life, like we invest the time into different games that we like to play, no matter what that game is, basketball, football, baseball, track and field, hockey, Monopoly, Xbox, if we put the time into being the best, we will ultimately be one of the best at whatever the game is that we're playing. 
Okay. Knowing God, having a strong network, and knowing your network will equal your net worth. And viewing life as a game is very important. And we should always play every game that we play to win. And the last point that we wanted to focus on was you're 24 hours a day, you're 160 hours per week, and you're seven days per week. What are we doing with our 24, our 168, and our seven to ultimately be the best that we can be every single day? It's worth the investment because you're only investing in yourself. And every time you invest in yourself to be the best that you can be, you're investing in the betterment of your future children that you have in 10, 15, or 20 years from now. Look around the rooms that you're in every day, understand why you're in that room, and maximize the opportunity in that room with your 24, your 168, and your seven to be the best that you can be. Before Mr. Zimmerman opens this thing up to any possible questions that someone may have for me or any thoughts or concerns, I want to end with a prayer before we open the floor. Heavenly Father, I thank you, Lord, for these young minds. I thank you, Lord, for these advisors and these people that are in important positions in their lives to help them be the best person that they could be every single day, Lord. I pray that they know you, Father, and understand your will over their life. I pray that they know you and understand that they need to be a humble servant to you with your will over their lives, Father. I pray that they trust their mentors. I pray that they create healthy networks. And I pray, Lord, that they use their 24, their 168, and their seven to the best of their abilities, Father, to create greatness for themselves, but to also create greatness for the future that they will have that they can't even see or fathom yet. I thank you for your love over their lives, Father, and I pray that they make the best out of their situations, and I pray that they are ultimately the best people that they could be. We love you, Lord. We thank you. We trust you. We believe in you, Lord. In your son, Jesus Christ, name we pray, Father. Amen. Any thoughts or questions from anybody on the floor? Yeah, I have some thoughts. Hey, Stu, how you doing? Mr. Woods, always good to see you, brother. How you doing, man? Always good to see you. Um, so these kids may not know that you probably bump into each other 25 times over the, over the course of time. And it's not ironic that people, we're gonna, I'm going to take a liberty here, keep showing up in these kids' lives. You talk about just at I'm still right here. Okay, I, I, you, 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 you cut out for a second, and I didn't hear the last like ten seconds of what you said, Marcus. Okay, can you can you can you hear me now? Yeah, I can hear you. Yeah. So me, you, James, Rodney probably have very similar stories when we talk about praying for these kids and their lives that they don't even know that they have. Can you touch on the fact that, you know, we were 17, 17, 18 before, thought we invented scholarships, thought we invented all the things that we think are important. And can you talk a little bit about how when you look back on those, the, those times while fun and while they do help shape you, they are minuscule in, in the overall process of life. Can you just touch on that just, just a hint? That's a, that's a great comment, Marcus, um, and you have some great thoughts. Um, what's funny about life is there's only one person that's got your fingerprints. I don't care where you are right now, and the bulk of you guys are in Georgia, somewhere in Atlanta or one of the surrounding areas. There's no one in Atlanta, there's no one at your school, there's no one in the state that you were in, there's no one in this country that has the same fingerprints that you have. So there's no one that thinks like you do. And there's no one that will have the opportunities that you have. So like Marcus was mentioning, like Mr. Woods just mentioned, 
we tend to get wrapped up in our own lives. Like if we shut down for a minute, the entire world shut down around us. And that's just not how it works. We've got 24 hours a day. <laughs> we keep coming back to time management. We've got 24 hours a day. We've got 168 hours a week. And we've got seven days a week to get the most that we can out of our individual lives, to make the most out of every opportunity. So if people are looking at you because you're doing things that aren't conducive to living a healthy life, you're eating foods that aren't good for you to eat when it comes to being an athlete and needing to have a good heart or a good cardiovascular system. If you're sleeping late and not waking up, getting things done. If you're not making the most of every hour that you spend in a classroom, if people are looking at you and shaking your head and saying, you're not handling this thing the right way, if people are in a position to tell you you're not handling this thing the right way. As a young adult or a young child that has a lot of learning to do, adhere to the advice to being a better person, to being a better steward over your opportunities, to being a better steward over your time, to being a better steward of what you're putting in your body, to stop eating a lot of junk and sugar every day. To drink more water every day. To eat more vegetables every day. To do these things that can make you be more alert and adherent, more to, to make you pay attention better. You've got a small window where what Mr. Woods, Marcus Woods is asking you to do what Coach Forrest is asking you to do, what Mr. Zimmerman is asking you to do, and what Mr. Stewart is asking you to do is simply be your best and do the most with your opportunity. Like Marcus said, uh, I've met him multiple times. We've hung out several times. We found ourselves in the same area of the world maybe 15 to 20 times per year for the last decade or so. So with that being said, there's nothing that Mr. Woods can't call me and ask me to do for him or someone that he knows that I wouldn't be willing to do. I've got three or four projects that I work on right now to feed my family. I've got a trailer repair company. I've got a marketing company that I help people with marketing and advertisement. Uh, my brother and I have an internet network that we do radio shows also off of. I'm a father of three. I'm homeschooling right now, and I'm the wife of a principal. But when James Forrest, your coach, calls me and asks me to do something or to spend some time with his kids, I make time out of my busy schedule, out of my 24 hours, out of my 168, and out of my seven, to dedicate it to trying to inspire you with my story or my thoughts on how you can be your best you. Take advantage of those times. Absolutely. Take advantage of everything that people are telling you. When I was a senior in high school, I was at the Shrine Bowl, the North South Shrine Bowl in South Carolina. We had a speaker by the name of Doug Williams, the quarterback winning coach from Tampa Bay, Coach for the, I mean, played for the Washington Redskins as well. Won the Super Bowl with the Washington Redskins. As one of 100 athletes in the state of South Carolina, sitting down, being blessed to listen to Doug Williams at the time, a Super Bowl winning quarterback, it was the first time in my life that I really paid attention to the speaker. I'm ashamed to tell you that I was 18 years old at the Senior Bowl for my high school state, and it was the first time that I really gave my undivided attention to the speaker that was Doug Williams. His message was, you are one of the best athletes in your state. You're in the top 100 because you're sitting in front of me in the state of South Carolina right now. You're gonna have a great opportunity to get a scholarship. 
but out of the 100 kids that's here, if you look to your right and look to your left, the kids that you're looking at are not going to graduate because they're not going to pay attention to what I'm saying, which is everything that I told you guys today, making the most of every minute you've got to be the best you that you can be. So I was blessed that day to pay attention to Doug Williams and to every other speaker I had throughout college, throughout the NFL, and throughout every conference or seminar that I've gone to as an adult. If someone has put somebody in front of me to help me be a better person, the best thing I could do is to take notes, listen to what they're saying, and take it to heart. So again, no one in the world has fingerprints like you do. No one's going to have the opportunities that you have, and no one else can make the most out of your opportunity for you than you can. What Mr. Forrest, what Mr. Woods, what Mr. Zimmerman, and what Mr. Stewart want for all of you is to make the most out of your opportunity. That's all we want. If you do that, you find yourselves in a good position in winning at this thing we call life. Marcus, did that, did that kind of hit on what you wanted, Mr. Woods? Absolutely. I, I really appreciate it. I'm sure some of the kids or the parents have some questions. Thank you, Stu. You're welcome. Very welcome. Uh, any other questions or, or thoughts from anybody? Yes, we have one. We got a few of us in the, in the room here. So, and this may be too technical, but I don't probably not for you. Um, I appreciate your time. Um, can you, can you, we're talking about time management. Can you articulate the difference in time management and time requirements between D1, D2, and D3 level athletes? Okay. All right. Um, the question that came from Mr. Lewis, and uh, thank you very much for, Brock, for paying attention and, and also for asking the question, was the difference in time management when it comes to D1 versus D2 versus D3. When I was in school at Georgia Tech, there was something called a 40-hour rule, OK? A 40-hour rule. The 40-hour rule was coaches with every team or with the football team had 40 hours a week, 40 hours a week of your time. So out of the 168 hours that we got out of the week, 40 of those hours were gone and they were dedicated towards me being a football scholarship athlete at Georgia Tech. So we spent X amount of time on the football field, X amount of time in the classroom studying football, X amount of time in study hall, X amount of time in practice doing drills, X amount of time in practice doing position drills, X amount of time in practice doing defensive drills or offensive drills, X amount of time in practice doing special team drills, X amount of time doing team drills. So the D1 athlete had 40 hours of required time with every scholarship athlete. So out of the 168 hours that we got every week, 40 of mine was gone to Georgia Tech and their coaches, which left me with 128 hours per week. My 168 is 128. I'm telling you right now that the coaches took more than their 40 hours. Every coach took more than the required 40 hours that they had of my time to make me a better athlete. So the 128 I'm supposed to get, let's just say the coach took 50 hours. So now we're down from 168, because coach is taking 50 hours, we're now down to 118 hours. We talked about, while I was speaking earlier, a two to one ratio for your studies, your classroom study versus your study at home. So if the coach has 50 hours of my time, Shouldn't I dedicate some time to what the coach is teaching me? The D1 athlete has no time to throw to the side. And in today's day, 
the D2 athlete and the D3 athlete, they're all on the same schedule as the D1 athlete. Every coach and teacher monopolizes every minute of your time because A, an idle ground is the devil's playground, and B, as a person in a position of power, which is to help you be the best that you can be, that coach wants you to dedicate your time to whatever it is that he is teaching. So with whatever time, to answer your question, Mr. Lewis, for whatever time you think it's going to take you to be the best D1 athlete you can be, you need to multiply that time. Because to be the best, you've got to be willing to always do something that someone else isn't willing to do. People have been talking about Michael Jordan, Tiger Woods, and LeBron James, uh, a lot of these athletes a lot because of the time that they dedicate to their crafts. Everybody I just mentioned is the best at what they do because they don't leave a stone unturned when it comes to dedicating themselves to being the best that they can be on and off their field of play. So Mr. Lewis, whatever time it takes to dedicate to being a D1 athlete needs to be multiplied by each individual that's on this screen. If you think you're worthy of being a D1 athlete, then you're working harder than the D2 athlete and the D3 athlete. And this isn't something that you can do once or twice a week. This is something that you need to do six to seven days per week. I ran Monday through Friday before school and after school to the sum of three miles extra over what I had to do for my running requirements as an athlete with football, basketball, or track. I did it because my brother said it would help me ultimately get an opportunity to have a scholarship, and that's exactly what it did. I poured my time into being the best that I could be. And looking back at it, had I done more, I probably would have been blessed to do more in my life had I dedicated more time to being the best. Did that help, Mr. Lewis? Yes, that was great. I uh, appreciate, we, we all appreciate. Um, we just know that the D1 is um, versus D2, D3, uh, much more commitment and much more structured time right. um, as you go high, you know, D1 relative to D3. Um, Mr. Lewis, I, I, I'll tell you a quick story, Mr. Lewis. Uh, Bobby Ross was my head coach at Georgia Tech for one year. And then Bobby Ross was my head coach in Detroit with the Lions for about three years towards the end of my career. One day, Coach Ross called me in his office and asked me, what were my goals in life? And you know, Stuart, what's your goals? What do you ultimately want to achieve? And I said, I want to be the best athlete I can be, I want to be the best student that I can be, and I want to be the best socialite that I can be. Coach Ross started laughing. <laughs> he said, well, when it comes to being the best student you could be, put in the time studying and that'll happen. When it comes to being the best athlete that you could be, whatever your coaches are asking you to do, do it times two. Always be willing to do more. If I give you one tape and tell you to study it on Monday night, you need to study that one tape twice or study two tapes, but always do more. And Mr. Lewis, he said, when it comes to being that socialite, the best athletes don't have time to be social. And when he said it, I laughed, ha, 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 yeah, but I hear you, coach, you know, the best athletes don't have time to be social. I understand, ha, 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 ha. But yeah, if I'm working so hard in class, if I'm working so hard in athletics, I deserve to have some downtime and have a girlfriend and take her out and to uh, have other friends that I do other things with. Coach Ross looked at me and said, so you decide if you want to be great or not. And he walked off. Looking back at that, was Coach Ross telling me not to have girlfriends? not to play video games, 
not to go watch James and Travis Best and Drew Barry play basketball on the weekends when I could get tickets. He wasn't telling me not to do that. What he was telling me was to dedicate every waking moment that I had outside of those things to be the best that I could be in my respective sport and in the classroom. And if every student athlete that is on this call right now dedicates all the time that they can into being the best that they can be and put the social things on the back burner or instead of doing three hours of social activities daily, if you just do one hour of social activities daily, you find yourself with an extra 14 hours per week to be a better student and a better athlete. If you do that stuff right now, if you invest that time right now, later on in life, when you've got a job or the job you want to have or you created the business you wanted to create or you're the starting point guard for Sacramento or for Atlanta or you're a starting linebacker for Green Bay or New Orleans, after all those things have been done because you worked to get to that point, you have all the time in the world to be the socialite you want to be. You will never run out of the opportunity in your life to be social you will run out of the opportunity in your life to ultimately be the best athlete and the best student that you can be. So take the time while you're young and in your 14s and 15s and 16 year range, take the time while you're in a position to invest in yourself with your studies and your athletics. Take the time to do those things as much as you can because socially, after you've accomplished all you wanted to athletically and all you possibly could as a student, getting to 3-4, getting to 3-5, getting to 4.0, after you've accomplished those things because of your work, you'll be able to be the best socialite that anybody could have ever asked you to be because of those other things you put all your time into. Hey, Stu, I'm glad, <laughs> I'm glad you brought that up. Um, I, I got a quick question for you. Yes, sir. So could you imagine right now, and just imagine when we played, could you imagine at the stadium you went to practice and your girlfriend was at the stadium? What? <laughs> oh, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Or oh, if you came down to the freshman gym and your girlfriend was hanging out at the freshman gym when you came down there, what, what, would, what would happen? Um, I, I got to be careful what I say um, <laughs> because there's young people on this line. But uh, have you I, ever heard of that? I mean, was that no? Was that did that even exist when we played? No. Um, my girlfriend in high school came to one practice, and her and her girlfriends drove up to the practice field. It was outside where we practice at, and they stood, they didn't even come out of the car, they just stayed in the car and watched practice from the car. I guess about 10 minutes after they'd been there, Coach Green, my high school coach, came up to me and goes, I don't know who was in that car, but for the last 10 minutes, all of your undivided attention that's supposed to be on me has been on that car. Come with me. <laughs> and I, I said, where are we going, coach? He said, I'm going to see who's in that car that's got your attention. We walk all the way across the football field. We jump the ditch. My girlfriend downs the window. And my coach goes, oh, it's your girlfriend. Uh, parents, please excuse my French, but I'm going to say this one thing. My coach said, sweetheart, you need to up your window and leave. Because thanks to you being here, his attention span is not where it needs to be. So after practice, I am literally going to run his dick in the dirt. <laughs> and Coach walked me back across the field. We had another hour or so at the practice. And after that practice, I ran the stadiums for 30 minutes. I did crab cross for another 30 minutes. And then I did up downs for another 30 minutes. I'm, I'm and what Coach was trying to get me to understand is that no matter if I'm in class, 
no matter if I'm in the football field, if someone is giving instruction, if someone's talking to me about the subject we're studying or the sport that we're playing, every ounce of matter that I've got, every ounce of energy that I've got has to be focused and dedicated on that person that has given me the instructions to be the best student or the best athlete I could be. There's no time for your girlfriend or for your cousin in them or for your boy in them that's not on the team to be where <laughs> you are trying to better yourself and your teammates. There's, there's no room in the 24 at practice for others. There's no room in the 168 at practice for the others. There's no room in the seven days a week when you're at practice for the others. You've got several amounts of time that you can dedicate to the girlfriend, to the boyfriend, to the homies that's not on that team when you're away from the team. Invest in yourself with your respective sports and invest in yourself in your classroom so you can get all you can out of that opportunity because you're gonna need that to excel to the next level, which is something you all wanna to get to. Appreciate that, bro. Appreciate that. If you're looking at your girlfriend, you're not looking at the boy. <laughs> if you're looking at your girlfriend, you're not looking at Pascal. If you're looking at your girlfriend, you're not looking at the instruction from learning how to shoot free throws. It's a great question, James. Any other thoughts, guys, or questions for me? Uh, yes, we just want to say thank you so much, um, all of you guys that are investing in our kids. Uh, you know, they're getting a lot out of it already, and, and as parents are as well, we really appreciate it. Uh, Ms. Melson, you're very welcome. Uh, thank you for being here, and that's something that I wanted to say to all of the parents and all of the kids uh, that's on the Zoom with us. Um, congratulations to you for doing whatever it takes to be the best. And when it comes to some of the things that the global leaders are trying to teach you, if you just understood their mission over your life and dedicated to the mission over what they're trying to teach you, you'll be in a better position. The global leaders want you to excel academically. They want you to excel athletically. They want you to excel socially, which we talked about being social, at a minimum, but they still want you to excel in that. They want you to excel emotionally and financially. Those are all things that you need to do good at to be well-rounded and to have the kind of life you want to have. So when it comes to excelling academically, athletically, socially, emotionally, and financially, they want you to be resilient while doing that. They want you to have character while doing that. They want you to have virtues while doing that. They want you to be disciplined and to become a stronger self while being driven and being a confident leader. So if you just listen to the myth, if you just listen to the, the, to, to the, the, the mission that the global, the global Leaders Program has for you is to give you the opportunity to have the best life that you can have. If you do these things, it's going to allow you to excel in every situation, okay? Uh, we talked about your, your, your network, equaling your network. Every opportunity you have to meet somebody, your stock goes up or it goes down immediately. Especially as, as, as uh, athletes, when we walk in a room as an athlete, the minute they see us, based upon how we look, how we care ourselves, how we talk, uh, our hygiene, uh, how we're dressed, every room that we walk in, the minute we walk in that room, your stock either goes up or your stock goes down. And if your stock goes up, you only have 30 seconds to keep your stock going up, to say something, to reply to something, to ask a question. You've got 30 seconds to keep your stock going up. You've got the same 30 seconds to make your stock plummet. So if you walked in the room and you're looking good and you, 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 you got your hair cut nice and you, you, you're asked a question and you say something that makes no sense, your stock just goes down. 
And as athletes and as individuals, it's not good business to have your stock going down. So while I was speaking, I mentioned to all of you, looking around the room and understanding why God has you in the room. Every room that you're in, every individual that you get to talk to, everyone that you get to meet, you get to make your stock go up or you get to make your stock go down. Everybody you meet, if your stock goes up, you will now have access to that individual the remainder of your life. But when you meet somebody, if your stock goes down, you're acting some way you shouldn't act. You don't look like you, like you play the part. You're ungroomed. You got your pants down to your knees. You ain't got your shirt tucked in. You don't have a belt on. If your stock goes down, the opportunity that you have to have access to someone goes down with that stock. So if you young people simply do the best that you can at understanding why you're in the room that you're in every time you go in the room, why you're with an individual, a teacher, a coach, or an administrator, a guidance counselor, if you make the most of those opportunities with the time you have with those people, your stock will go up every day of your life and you will have limitless resources. If James called me, if Coach Forrest called me two weeks ago and asked me to speak on something that I couldn't speak on, I would have said two things. One thing I would have said is, hey man, I, that's a little bit out of my comfort zone, James, so I don't want to talk to the kids about that. I don't think I could, you know, deliver anything to them to help them with that. But if that's what you're looking for, I got a guy I can call that will be willing to do it. So what, what happened? What, what just happened there? He called me asking me to do something. I said, Jim, I don't think I'm proficient enough to help the young people to talk about that skill set. But I've got someone in my network that I trust and believe can impart wisdom on those kids in, with that skill set. Let me call them for you. So because of the individual that James is and because he's made the most out of being in the room, He's listened to his peers. He's listened to teachers and coaches and administrators. Because he called me and I know him and we've got goodwill, now I'm extending my network to him and what happens in return. That ultimately helps you if you pay attention and listen to whoever speaks. So your coaches and your parents and your, 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 your uh, teachers and your administrators they're not going to sit you down and ask you to listen to people who are not going to assist you on your plight of being the best that you can be. Take advantage of it. <laughs> Take advantage of every opportunity you get to be the best that you can be with who your leadership or who your mentors are putting in front of you. So, Ms. Melson, thank you for the, for the comment. I appreciate you for being here. You're welcome. Thank you. Ryan, I just want to say thank you for taking time out um, of your schedule to give this information, more so motivation for these young people. Yes. Um, leading into this weekend, I'm actually happy I get to uh, get to lead the charge. I'm going to turn up the thermometer in the room for these kids and their families. Um, we're actually going to have a little discussion on why these kids hide behind the screen, mm -hmm. uh, why they hide behind their parents, why the parents hide behind reality. Uh, this would be good for James, for some of his family, for some of his, um, the families out there to hear. As well, I'm going to invite some administrators, superintendents, some other college coaches. I'm going to invite everybody in to the room uh, this weekend and really try to explain to the young people why being the next is not being the only. Exactly. The importance of being the only and, and how they can become that. Um, you know, seeing their shadow, understanding those things. And I think you really defined it when you gave them a gave them an outline to, to the day, time management. A lot of these kids right now are scared. And it's, it's not that they're scared of, of COVID-19, it's they're scared of success. Right. And that to me is the, biggest, is the biggest failure of all, is if you're, if you're scared of success, you're, you're shooting yourself in the foot. Yep. So, so I thank you again for coming on and, and really opening up the eyes to a lot of these young people. Well, uh, Rodney, thank you for what you're doing with the Global Leaders. Uh, Coach Forrest, um, I love you like a brother, man, you know that, thank you. 
for uh, what you're doing to help these kids and not just help them be the best athlete that they could be, but helping them be the best total person that they could be. Uh, what you guys are doing with the Global Leaders is, is it's ahead of its time and it's something that's going to benefit these kids tremendously when it comes to preparing for the best future that they can have. So thank you guys for all you're doing. I appreciate it. Appreciate you, you bro. Love you, Stu. I'll be in touch, brother. Okay, James. Good talking to you. Right. Thank, thank you, care, thank you so much. You thank, thank you, you very much. Thank you Thanks, very much. guys. I'll be in touch, guys. Thanks. Take care.